Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my channel. If you are new, today we are going to be doing a demo first impressions with the new the Jeffree Star Jawbreaker palette. I don't know what's happened to me. Normally I don't wear any color on my eyes. I actually just got rid of a lot of my like more colorful palettes like my blue blood. I got rid of my blood sugar. I got rid of my James Charles, like bit everything with color. Cause I was like, I never use these. I don't need them. And then as soon as they were gone, I said, I don't have any colored eyeshadows. And I suddenly just wanted nothing but colored eyeshadow. I got this. I also ordered the mini breaker online. Um, there was like, I don't know if any of you caught this or managed to get it, but there was like this little pre-release last week on Friday, exactly one week ago, where they released the mini breaker for like 20 minutes and then it was gone. And I have like trend mood notifications turned on. I always, <laughs> just so that I can just be in more debt with my makeup addiction, in a prompt way. I always like am on top of it with the new launches. I'm always like, yes, go get it. And I get the notifications and all that. So I got it. I went back to check. I was like, did that really just happen? Was that real? And then it was gone. It was off the website. It was only up for 20 minutes. However, it has taken so long to ship to me that I didn't even like, it hasn't even come yet. Like I went to the Morphe store on the date of the release and bought this in person and could have just brought bought the mini breaker also but I mean at first they were like creating a label I ordered it on Friday I think I got a notification either Saturday or Monday that it was being processed and they were creating a label in Chatsworth California and I was like that's great I'm in California this will get here super quickly and then I like it started tracking and it was in Wisconsin and I was like whoa, whoa, whoa wait like come back I'm in California come back to California <laughs> and so now today it's finally being delivered but I could have just gone and picked it up in the store and not paid shipping and so I'm kind of annoyed about that however I was really excited about the launch of this palette after wearing only brown eyeshadow for years and years and my entire life I said I need that neon colored palette. So I ordered the mini. It's supposed to get here today. The mini is a nine pan palette and it's $28. I unnecessarily paid $582 for shipping and $2 for taxes. So it ended up being $35.85. Then this one I bought in the store. This is a big old palette. Uh, this I think is his biggest palette he's made yet. I think even the bigger ones like the um, the blue blood and the blood sugar only like they don't have this bottom row. They only have 18 shadows and this has a whole nother row. This has this one has 24 shadows and I think it was also his most expensive expensive. This one cost me $58. Sales tax was $450, so $62.50. So I spent about $100 on these palettes. So, whoops. Um, with this release, there was also... And I'm guessing that it's sold out now. I went to the Morphe store at about 10.03. It opens at 10 and it was like crazy packed with people they weren't even keeping the jawbreakers on the shelf because they were just running out so quickly and they were having to restock them they were just keeping them all in the back wall so i would bet a good sum of money that these are completely sold out but let's just look just for fun actually still available on beautylish yeah it's all okay it looks like it's all still available on beautylish he also released there's a Brain Freeze Skin Frost Pro Palette, three Supreme Frosts released, three lip scrubs, the Star Mirror, a makeup case, six of his Velour Liquid Lipsticks, and six of the Lip Ammunitions were released. Um, I wasn't really interested in the other stuff, but these eyeshadows, I were just like, have to have it. Don't know why. Never worn these colors in my life, but all of a sudden. Um, it looks like this is a pigment palette. Um... They technically say that pigments are not eye safe because they can cause staining on the eyes. However, if you're going to have shades like these reds um, or oranges or pinks, you need to use dyes because typically they use carmine. But Jeffree Star is a vegan brand and carmine is made from crushed beetles. So 
your really only alternative is to use pigments that are technically not eye safe per the FDA. I think all of his palettes use them. Some people freak out about that stuff. I don't really care. I would rather like animals not be killed than like my eyelids not be stained. That just doesn't really bother me, but good to know. I'm not going to get into super detailed ingredient analysis right now because this is just going to be a first impressions for me. Um, I went out and got this. I am not wearing any eye makeup currently. I am just wearing mascara. I feel like I look like that creature from Pan's Labyrinth that like has no eyes and like holds his eyes in his hands and like I don't know hangs out in the cellar and like eats spaghetti. I, what does he do? I don't know. I was looking at this. I will say the color pattern kind of intimidates and confuses me. It's not the most like cohesive um it's just kind of like blah, 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 blah. like it reminds me of like when there's like an error on your tv you know like when it's like all those different colors and it's like Meh. i'm gonna go ahead and start with the new abh eye primer i've been using this for about a week now yeah i think i like it i don't there's something like my face is just weird um and like will not hold makeup like really no eye primers work super well on me like my my like eyebrows never stay on my highlight never stays on my shadows never stay on my foundation stays on but like any like powdery or like pencil like product just like absorbs into my face i don't know where it goes probably into my brain and that's why i have this like deep rooted makeup addiction because i'm just absorbing eyeshadow through my skin 24 hours a day. I don't actually wear my eyeshadow for 24 hours, just pointing that out. Okay, so I'm gonna start out using my Hakuhodo B214. This is my one of my favorite brushes for doing just a quick transition shade. Um, I'm gonna start with the shade Wow right here, that yellow shade. This brush is just really like foolproof. Okay, that's not showing up. Um, it just is like exactly for me at least like the width that I would want my transition shade to be and I can just sweep it back and forth and it's just like done. Also if I notice that my transition shades are looking a little bit sloppy up here I can just go over this and it's kind of just like a nice little like uh, like a smudger almost like a big old smudger. This is obviously not gonna be like a full review of the palette. There are so many shades in this palette and I'm only gonna be able to use like a handful of them today. Um, if you guys are interested, I can post a more in-depth review later after I've tried the palette for a while. I really like that yellow. I honestly would like just wear this. I think that's like very pretty and like I don't I recently got like the little like busy art palettes um the warm edit and the yellow in there just makes me look like with my skin tone makes me look like I have jaundice a little bit but this one I it, it's like a fresh summery pretty perfect it's like pigmented but not like overpowering I really like this like I think it would be very avant-garde to just do like a little out to the side come on you buy one one colorful eyeshadow palette and now you're using words like avant-garde get get a grip okay so next i'm gonna go in with i'm not gonna say the shade name because it's a swear word it's the f word but this one right here this is like a like a neon coral kind of a shade i'm going to use my sonia g worker pro for this one i'm just putting that on the outer corner of my eye and into the crease and then blending up into that yellow. I really like that shade actually. I kind of wish I hadn't put the yellow down first because it's kind of taking away from the corally shade, the F word shade. Um, but I, I don't, so far I'm really liking these. They're not like so pigmented that I'm like super scared of them. They're like muted but still delivering the color I want them to if that makes sense. Um, I'm gonna just keep building this up because I would like to see this coral a little more. So far they don't go on crazy pigmented but they are buildable which I prefer. Um, I just find that to be a little easier to work with when it doesn't go on like crazy bright and I kind of have an opportunity to build it up to like my desired opacity. 
but I really like this like blown out neon look that's going on right now. Sometimes I like raise my voice like way too much at the end of sentences. Like I really like what's going on right now and I don't know why I do that. Um, what the shit do we do now? I'm kind of feeling like I want to do a cut crease and just like cut out the lid with some white. I'm going to use my white Morphe concealer to cut the crease and kind of see what inspires me from there. Okay, I put a lot of concealer on my eyes. I am not feeling terribly inspired yet, but let's just see. Okay, I'm gonna just for the, for the sake of cohesion, I'm gonna go in with this, yeah, this cherry wet shade right here. This is like a hot, like a dark hot pink, like a magenta. Yeah, magenta. I'm gonna use my Hakuhoto B004G. It's like a flat packing brush. I'm gonna put a little bit too much concealer on my eyelids. Might still be a little wet, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I don't know how to do eyeshadow that well. It's, it's possible. Well, that is pigmented as shit. Wow, that is beautiful. Okay, I see you, Jawbreaker. Did anyone see, used to watch that movie like all the time? in the like early 2000s late 90s that jawbreaker movie with what was her name rose mcgowan the one who was in charmed and married marilyn manson i'm really dating myself with all these pop culture references to charmed and jawbreaker i know that and rose mcgowan and marilyn manson's marriage but I accept it. I really want to get a little bit basic here and use this shade Snack. This is described as the only glitter shade, although it looks like a shimmer or a metallic to me, but I'm going to use this on the inner part of this cut crease. But does anyone remember that movie? It used to be on TV, I swear to God, like every single day. This was before Netflix existed, if anyone remembers that time. But like, every day and it was like about these like really cool girls i guess who like it was kind of like a dark like a mean girls before there was a mean girls and they like murdered their friend accidentally and then i don't know but but yeah i loved that movie and that's what i thought of i think i'm gonna deepen up the crease even more using this like eggplanty maroon shade raspberry you know i have to say this is like the most successful cut crease that i've ever done um, which I'm not saying to like be impressive of me because I know it's not that good But this these eyeshadows are just very for someone who does not like to work with color very much very easy to work with and The palette kind of looks like it has no rhyme or reason But everything is like like I'm having a huge struggle every time I pick the next color to put on but it's all going together like Really nicely. I think this shade right here snack is like really pretty if you want to do kind of like a glittery warm tone like pinky cut craze i'm getting really like valentiny vibes right now from this look i'm gonna try going in with some of this orange juice shade this is like an orangey shimmer for it to pop in the middle of my crease to like marry that like champagne-y shade with the magenta oh my god that is so beautiful that orange juice one might be my favorite one that i've tried yet it literally looks like a like it's probably not translating on camera but it looks like a neon orange coral highlighter like across my lids it's gorgeous oh, let me get some more of that okay i'm gonna put some eyeliner on because this look is a bit much with just the mascara so i will be back and we'll figure out something to do with the lower lash line here i kind of just want to do like the smoky mm, Let's do bubblegum for now and see how that looks. I have to say, like, after the Blue Blood palette, I was like, I don't know if I want to buy a Jeffree Star anymore. Just because that palette, like, a lot of his palettes are so, like, outside the box that I, someone who, like, cannot think outside the box for my life, like, 
I find them difficult to use and difficult to make looks with. Um, and it's weird because I actually am like a really good artist, like drawing and painting. I was like a, I worked at a tattoo shop for a little while doing an apprenticeship and, um, very briefly majored in art in college. Um, I'm really good at art, but like for some reason with eyeshadow, like it just does not translate at all. Same with crafts. I can't do a craft, any craft. That is really beautiful. Um, so I was just kind of like, I'm done buying these palettes because I get so excited about the Jeffree Star palette. It's almost, I'm actually going to put a little bit of this up top because I think that goes really well with the other colors. I just like get so excited about getting them before they sell out. It's like a video game, like an expensive video game, like Candy Crush, for instance, that I play, like World of Warcraft. And then, and then it gets here and I'm just like, what do I do with this? I don't like any of these colors. And so I was like, after Blue Blood, which I literally like dreaded even filming a review for, like I didn't want to use it at all. I didn't like it. It didn't make sense to me. You can only make like slight variations of the same look with that. And I was like, mm, I think I'm done buying these palettes. And then when this one came out, I was like, okay, maybe one more chance. And I, I think this is like the most cohesive colorful palette that he's made for people who aren't good with color like myself and I really like this palette um I'm gonna really smoke out that lower lash line if I can find something to do it with um I'm using the Sonia G crease bro just because that's my least dirty brush right now and I'm just gonna take that yellow and this might actually kind of muddy up because that bubble gum color is a little bit pink but I'm just gonna try and like blow that out a little like a low yellow around the edges. I'm gonna take this Sephora brand liner brush, this angled liner brush and take this metallic purple shade Bite Me and put that right up under the lower lash line. That's a pigmented purple. That is like a very purpley purple. I'm not sure if it's showing up on camera. It's very soft though. The brush is like digging into it. A little bit of fallout with this one. But this has been the first one so far that I've experienced fallout with and I'm also just like digging into it with basically a razor blade and putting it on my eye. So. I'm gonna actually take some of that Bite Me, that metallic purple, and put some of that on the upper part too, just to kind of marry them together a little better. Okay, then I'm gonna go back in with my Sonia G Crease Pro, because again, it's the cleanest brush. Oh yeah. Okay, so that Bite Me shade kind of crumbled. I don't know if you can see it, but there's like little pieces of it all in the other ones. So you definitely want to be careful with those metallic shades because they're very soft. Um, maybe don't go digging an angled eyeliner brush into them as I did. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back in with that snack shade and just drag that. I mean, not drag it. You know. Ah! I've got my eye. Not eye safe. Probably not a good idea. I'm going to do the inner corner and underneath. I'm also going to go again back in with that Bite Me shade and just put a little more because I just can't. You know when you just can't, like you don't know when to stop? Holy crap. That is a strong purple. That is a robust purple shade. You know when you just like, you have like a pretty good makeup look, but you just don't have like the restraint <laughs> to stop and you just keep adding more and more layers on top of each other? Also, I don't know why I refuse to say the name of the swear word eyeshadow, the F word in this video, because I literally swear a lot on my channel. I don't, I'm like on my period and my brain isn't working. Um. Okay, so that's the completed look. It's really pretty. I don't, like, I wouldn't think it would be because I started with, like, yellow and then orange and then pink and then champagne and then purple and then orange and then, like, I put a lot of shit on my eyes, but it's like, let me get away from my lights and see if you can get a better idea. It's, like, real, that's actually worse. 
it's really really pretty and I really like it um if you are someone who wants to use color and are afraid of color I think this is a good option there's like enough shades in here to make a lot of looks and it looks overwhelming at first but they all marry so well together and they're so like buildable and blendable that I think it's beautiful this is a beautiful eyeshadow palette at least as far as I've tried granted I've only tried it once there's a lot of shades I haven't tried if you guys want a more in-depth review where I go into like ingredients and all the shades and how they work in swatches and stuff let me know but first ex first expressions oh my god first impressions I'm really pleased with this I think it's really beautiful it's a really fun palette for summer um the shades are really blendable smooth easy to work with some of the metallics are a little soft so be careful digging into them and with potential fallout on the eyes um but I'm really excited to use this palette more I hope this review first impressions whatever you want to call it was helpful and I'll see you guys next time Mwah.